Welcome to the segment of Pittsburgh Business Virgin. My name is Brad Hilbert, host of the show, also uh, owner and founder of Three Years Wealth Management Group. I'm really pleased today to have my co-host, Mr. Jimmy Wells, here. Thanks, Brad, for having me. I appreciate it. And we are really pleased to have Christopher R. Evans. Hi, guys. And he is the v- a VP at True Fit out of Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania, a little north of where we are today. And uh, we're excited to have Christopher in because he is the entrepreneur entrepreneur of entrepreneurs. He's started a lot of companies, been involved in a lot of startups and angel funding and everything else. So we're really pleased to have him in and uh, get your notepads out, get your pen ready to go because you're going to want to take some uh, some notes about uh, things that Christopher has to say. So we're going to get it going here. Mr. Jimmy Wells. Without further ado, Christopher, um, what have been the keys to starting a business and and being an entrepreneur? You know, uh, it starts from the beginning. Yeah, sure. First of all, thank you both for having me here today. It's a pleasure. Um, I'd be remiss to to say that I'm the entrepreneur of entrepreneurs. I've been privileged to have been (laughs) placed in some... So modest, so modest. Well, I've been privileged to work with a lot of great teams uh, of people who had common plans to build things. Um, It seems as though, for me... uh, I always wanted to be in something very stable and secure, and I was always thrust into opportunities to help build. I guess it's a gene. It's a, an innovation gene that I have within. Um, your question about keys to starting a business, it starts with the team. Who, who around you are you looking to go to market with? Um, what are their skills? Do they offset what you have? Do they complement what you have? How solid of a team are you? How well can you get along? How well can you argue, and how well can you... Um, make up <laughs> when, yeah. when you don't always agree. I think the other big key is, you know, someone asked me a long time ago, what's more important, the team you have, the product you have, or the right market? It has to be the right market for your product. Um, and that can be cyclical. But the key is to really understanding if you have an opportunity to build something that is disruptive in the marketplace and you have a strong team, what is the next big piece? The next big piece is having great advisors around you, people who are able to fill in the gaps that you and your team may not have. A lot of times an entrepreneur may feel that their product is standalone, the greatest game changer in their market. (coughs) It's going to be a curb jumper. It's going to be revolutionize the way things um, are done in the market. And that's, that's bold. And you have to have that kind of enthusiasm as an entrepreneur. But what you really have to understand is what don't we know about our business? What needs to happen in order to propel this? Who do we need to put on this team or to talk to, most importantly to, to digest their feedback in order to get us in front of the investment community or in in front of our stakeholders, in front of users? We were talking um, before we uh, started uh, this episode, and and that was one of the things that you said, because I was saying, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Angel, (laughs) Uh, investors sure. and, and starting companies and everything else. And and you actually picked that out first. You said you got to have great advisors around you yeah. when you first start. Yeah. I mean, I've been lucky. I, I have a gentleman that um, I've, I've known for years and years, and we actually are business partners, and he's down in Atlanta. <clears throat> and i got to be honest with you, I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for him. Mm-hmm. I mean, not only a great uh, mentor, a great advisor, and he's always, you know, he's honest. You need someone that's going to be honest and not just tell you everything's you do. perfect and great. Well, you know, when I went through my first angel round with our team back in 2000, it was the dot-com years, and money was plentiful all across the country for any product idea. Um, and you start first with friends, family, and fools, right, the three Fs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you go to the angels, and then you start taking a look at venture or private equity options. But, you know, the interesting thing about how the world has changed is we've been through a couple of downturns since yeah. 2000, some major ones. We're in one yeah. now. <clears throat> Today, angels and the VC community um, are far more discerning. They will grill you if you don't have your act together. You know, Christopher, can you um, uh, real quick uh, distinguish between what an angel investor mm-hmm. versus a venture capital sure, I will. investor is? Yeah. In fact, this is something not a lot of people know. The reason that an angel is called an angel I don't want to botch the, the accuracy of the story, but once upon a time, there was a fellow who had committed a check to a startup company, and he passed away before he was ever able to present that to the company. And about a year and a half later, his wife was cleaning out his office, and he found she found this check for this company with a small note. And he she literally showed up at that office to these young people and said, my husband wanted him to have this, and they said, it's money from heaven. 
It's money from an angel. So that's actually what an angel, okay. well, how they got the brand of being angels. But what angels are, are people that are accredited uh, at least a million or above uh, in net worth. Individuals who care to invest in startup ventures, startup companies, as opposed to or in conjunction with traditional investments on the stock market. These are people that really have an understanding of a product or a team or a management group and <clears throat> know that there's an opportunity for the company to achieve traction and really ultimately an exit. An angel's going to be looking for 10 times X, 10 X um, uh, on, on an exit of anything that they put their money in. Um, I'll, I'll spend another moment on angels before I, I go into venture capitalists. What happened in those early days of the 90s, angels were often spur spread all over the community. You met them on the country club, you met them in the cocktail parties, but you met them individually oftentimes. What's happened since the last few downturns is angels are now grouping together as collaborate uh, collaborations all across the country. It's what they call angel groups. Like here locally, we're involved with one called Blue Tree Allied Angels. It's probably the best known in, in um, the, the Pittsburgh region, most certainly, and is part of the Angel Capital Association, which is a national organization of grouped angels all over the country. Why, why do you see that grouping going on, Christopher? That's a great question, Brad. What it is is it's about the collective intelligence in the room. Let's say you and I and Jimmy were wanted to get behind an idea. We have different life experiences, perhaps different industry experiences. I might be a tech expert. You might be a finance expert, maybe for the purpose of discussion, you're an expert in healthcare. Well, the ideas that come before angel collaboratives are not always one type of idea. It might be a tech play, it might be a healthcare play, life sciences. By having groups of intelligent people in the same room that understand how angel investing works, you're better able to make a decision and put more horsepower behind mm -hmm. the funding. In other words, when we agree, this is a great idea, you've vetted it, I've vetted it, the three of us go in on this thing, we're gonna fund it from the start, we're gonna own a bigger piece of it together. So it is just a-, a It's an, also a diversification tool as well. Very much so, very much so. Now, it's been my experience with angels that um, individual angels still tend to favor certain types of investment. It, life sciences, people love life sciences, yeah. things, materials, yeah. you know, uh, material sciences, guys, that's their wheelhouse. Um, are you going to get them really excited about a brand new app that they've never, you know, if they don't really understand the world of apps, probably not. Yeah. But the good news is today, there's a, a broader cross section of how people invest. In other words, even material science plays could some way have a technology flavor. I, I, health sciences, or, excuse me, life sciences and healthcare, there's a tech play. So there's a bit of a confluence of how technology and industries are going closer together now in the world of investment. Now, VCs, on the other hand, mm -hmm. are more involved on a day-to-day -day basis typically yeah. want yeah. Um, the majority ownership. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when you make a deal with a VC, some people sometimes say you're kind of making a deal with the <laughs> devil a little you, bit, right? You read my mind, yeah. yeah. Uh, VCs are not always an attractive option for, um, for investment. Uh, they're very necessary for certain types of, uh, of, of ideas. Depending on the kind of money you're looking to raise, the kind of horsepower that they bring is much greater. Having said that, you're right. There's uh, usually a stock, uh, not excuse me, an ownership play involved. There's yeah. a, maybe a board seat, maybe two. Maybe they have a, a CEO they're going to install. So you do give a little bit more away with venture capital. Having said that, the deal sizes are much larger. Mm -hmm. yeah. What we've seen in the last two years that's kind of interesting and not surprising given the overall economic downturn in the world is that the VC deal sizes have come down closer to where angels are. In other words, a deal that a VC would have walked away from three or four years ago, now they give more, you know, deeper consideration. I was about to say, VCs are looking for deals. Where, right now they are, yeah. You know, <coughs> those that still have money you know, to yeah, invest. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I was, I had lunch with someone that knows a lot of people in that side of the, the business, and they said, you know, four or five years ago, that it was a constant. Hey, yeah. Now, one, they're vetting them a lot more. Mm -hmm. Number two, there's not as many deals now. Right. So right. they're, they're, they're actually looking for the people who are still doing it. They're, they're looking. Yeah. And the deals have to be much cleaner. Much cleaner. Yeah. Also with angels, the typical investment of an angel group, at least what I've seen here locally, is around 250000 300 yeah. That's a little small for, for where VCs, yeah, VCs want to play. Go. VCs want to go a little higher. But you, what you said is absolutely yeah. correct. I wouldn't even add to that. Um, well, I, what's, um, as, we, as we finish up this segment, um, VC and as well as angels, typically they're looking for 10x. Is that a, um, a fair <clears throat> statement? I think VCs look for something a little bit larger than that. Um, but yeah, angels certainly L looking for 10x. But they they also kind of want to know when they're gonna. Yeah, they're, exit. their time frames are a lot different. There's a yeah. there's a bit of a more perverse push for exit. Sometimes yeah. with angel investing, you have to realize it's a six year deal. Yeah. Um, five or six year deal. Having said that, it really depends on the product idea. And yeah. they rely on the, uh, the 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 entrepreneurs themselves to 
and put together the team to deliver. of people to deliver yeah. the product or whatever Absolutely, that, they're, that they're bringing to And frankly, farm. what angels want to see now is how creative you can be. Mm-hmm. They don't want to see you paying salaries to your team. They want to see how you're effectively utilizing social media and technology yeah. and free apps and things as such. How are you going to grow it? How are you going to grow it? and how Not quickly. how you're going to get money out That's of it. right. It's really about the yeah. pitch. And the yeah. pitch... That's why we talked earlier about advisors. Yeah. You have to have people around you that know how to go in front of the, those communities. And my friend, if you haven't been in front of them, you, you don't know what you're in yeah. for. Yeah. Yeah. It can be quite a life changer. Christopher, hold your thoughts. Sure. Um, I told you before we started this episode, you better have your 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 pen, uh, pencil ready, and a, and a and a clean notepad because, I mean, I took a whole page of notes already, <laughs> and I, I probably missed a few things, so I'm going to go back and rewatch this. But um, awesome, awesome stuff. We're here with Christopher Evans, VP of TrueFit. Come back for our next uh, segment.